And after we ate it, we were just like, well, that was good, but it's not worth $25. It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's superhero slate. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes, it's superhero slate. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris Diller. And my name is Mike Royer. And this week, the Batman gives us cat riddles. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love cats. You know this. Uh, there's a three-hour Disney Plus preview if you're wanting to watch the most maddening and fascinating <laughs> thing at the same time. Or if you want to scroll through, I think literally the longest tweet thread I've ever seen, you could do that too. Yes. Uh, we also learned that WandaVision is part comedy, part darkness. Ooh, spooky. And more. <laughs> so uh, if you've been following the show the last two weeks, uh, Chris and I, uh, I would say our bodily functions have been a little bit all over the map, but I feel like I'm finally getting back to normal. Chris, how about you? I am better. I might have a couple dry coughs, but um, I think it's just because I'm dehydrated. Did mm-hmm. you cough over there? <laughs> yeah, it's just that time of the year. I mean, you know it's you know it's like cold and flu season when the office you work in just like takes the hit in the wallet and they just bring somebody in with a bunch of flu shots. They're just like, uh, we're going to lose so much productivity of half of this office is just sick. So if your office is giving out a flu shot, uh, definitely get one of those. Uh, you don't want to fall into whatever uh, sickness hole that we've been in. Is that like a like a street vendor that's bringing in some like uh, food truck <laughs> kind of thing, but for flu shots? Is that yeah, that goes? Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, I I think they're registered nurses. I don't know who they're attached to, but it's always nice when you can get a free flu shot. Um, uh, you know, we like free samples at the grocery store, so why not free flu shots? Really, it should be the same. I should be able to get a cube of cheese at the grocery store with one hand, and then my other hand is being swabbed by alcohol and getting the flu shot. You know. Well, I mean, the thing is, though, I want cheese every time I go to the grocery store. I don't want a flu shot every time I go to the grocery store. <laughs> this doesn't well, seem feasible. <laughs> yes, that's very, very true. Uh, but, uh, Chris, we've uh, we've been gearing up for our secret Christmas card this oh, year. Uh, I don't know if anybody can, can hear a different uh, audio on my end, uh, but I'm recording in a different room today, so I'm seeing different things. So maybe this will influence uh, influence the podcast. Maybe I'll have a more imagination as I look around the room. But I'm looking at, I'm looking at a few props from the Christmas card. So uh, if you're not lucky enough to be on the Christmas card list, uh, you know, you can always follow on social media and check it out. But we always, we always theme it up. My wife likes to go all out and drive me crazy planning. So uh, as I look at all of the holiday fall decorations and as candy corn season starts to peter out, we start to move into all these other end of the year seasons. Well, I mean, you know, I, I, I know your wife. I've known her longer than I've known you. And I, if I know anything about her, she does go all out. <laughs> uh, um, and you guys, you guys, you know, had um, spent some time together this weekend. It looked like doing some other fun stuff. We don't have to bring it up, but I thought that was really cool. Uh, you guys always going all in on everything. Um, but uh, today is my wife's birthday. So uh, she's graciously allowing me to record on uh, on her a, birthday. What a lovely woman! <clears throat> yeah, uh, she probably won't want me to tell everybody, but she hit thirty uh, oh, this year. Oh, the dirty thirty! Yeah, so uh, it's kind of all in. It was um, quite quite the past few weeks, but you know we won't have to do this for like what another ten years or so, another decade event party. So. Uh, yeah, we've just, I've really just been doing that all week, uh, handling that. And then now she's on fall break this week, so she's going to be home all week. Oh, uh, the, life of, the life of a teacher. And what, what's great about fall break is, since she doesn't have to go to work, I'm thinking about uh, take, taking a personal day and going to Ikea and getting some Ikea furniture for our house. So uh, Bring back some meatballs, man. Uh, I don't really want to bring back the meatballs. You, <laughs> those don't heat up well. You gotta eat them <laughs> are, are, are you a are you a cocktail meatball person? So you have to shift your head away from the Swedish meatball, which is in a gravy. But are but do you like the cocktail meatball that's like usually cooked in like a mixture of like ketchup and jelly, which oh. is like the most midwestern thing that I can think of? B- barbecue sauce is is my my weakness here. Um, and yes, my grandma makes a 
essentially what is a cocktail meatball, but they're like three times the size of them and Ooh, is covered wow. in barbecue sauce and ketchup kind of thing. It's that's like a miniature huge. meatloaf, I guess. So. <laughs> that's what it sounds like. God, that's that'd be gigantic, but it sounds delicious. Oh my gosh, it's making my mouth water now. Uh, I ch- I tried this else. new I tried this new <laughs> thing. Uh, take take a look out there at your local malls and let me know if this is getting around the country. But there was like a Belgian waffle stand at the mall this weekend, and it's like Belgian waffle on a stick. So I was looking at their like cast iron forms behind the counter, and it's like a kind of like a longer. Uh, it's not corn dog shape, but I would say corn dog approximate size waffle. And then they put a stick in it, so you get a bit like a a long skinny Belgian waffle on a stick. Then they dip it in chocolate and they put toppings on it, and uh, it was it was pretty good. The smell definitely lures you in. Like if you're if if you think like a soft pretzel smell, like at an Auntie Anne's or a Wetzel's pretzels, like draws you over to that booth. Like the smell of like cooking waffles is like. 10 times greater. So actually to their disadvantage, the smell of their food was way more intoxicating than actually the taste of it, which wasn't that bad. So uh, I, I, this seemed like a thing that would be like straight out of Shark Tank. You know, people go on pitching their idea of their like waffle on the go, waffle on a stick or whatever. But oh, um, yeah. yeah, take a look at it because it, at the very least you can smell it for free. Oh man, I, I can I can smell it now. <laughs> to be honest, I'm, I'm hungry. It's, it's dinner time here. We're recording during. I'm a little hungry. Might talk about food a little bit. So I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. But um, I think tonight, I mean, we're going to jump into the news here, Mike. Tonight is the night for Watchmen the series to debut on HBO. Uh-huh. Uh, so if, you know, um, that's 9 o'clock my time, right? Or 10 o'clock my time, I think, Eastern. So you might you might be able to eat dinner and watch the Watchmen. Oh yeah, that's how it works. I mean, that's where, that's how Game of Thrones worked for like the last ten years. We were lucky enough to uh, to get that show like right around like seven. It's nice because like I feel like when I'm watching something like Game of Thrones, I wanted like a big steak and a baked potato, and you know I cook that between six and seven o'clock, sit down and watch the show. A whole, now, tur- to... a whole turkey leg, you know, <laughs> like medieval yeah. times, right? There. Yeah. So now it's like, what food do you pair with the Watchmen? You know, I'll, I'll have to watch the first episode and see what uh, connects with it the best. But I think the the Watchmen. Um, I don't know exactly how long the run is, but uh, I think in early November is when we get His Dark Materials, which is going to be another very premium show. And in between Watchmen and His Dark Materials is the last season of Silicon Valley, which is a very, very nerdy show. So if you listen to this podcast, you probably also would really like Silicon Valley. So you can check that out on HBO. Um but yeah, uh, HBO they got a, they're, they're cranking out a lot here, and I actually scrolling through our notes just to make sure I'm not jumping the gun. But uh, HBO when it becomes HBO Max is also getting the rights to all of the uh, Ghibli films like Spirited Away and Princess Mononoke. So that platform's really filling out very quickly. Well, it's it's got to be for the price point they were shooting right, like right. It was like sixteen and something dollars. What are you thinking? I I think it's just I think it's all rumored right now. There's some people yeah. out there like me included who are still speculating it's going to remain the same price just because they want to stay on a competitive level and I don't know I don't know how exactly they're going to move their books around over at HBO to make this work out or if, you know if maybe they just want to run at a loss for a little bit to gain subscribers but um, it, it's either between uh, $12 that no it's $15 right yeah, now I believe it's like so, it, it, 15 or up right yeah I, I I would say it's safe to say it's going to be be between 15 to 25 if it goes to 25 we're going to see lots of articles and hot takes about how expensive is too expensive for a streaming network, and that's going to be the whole conversation when that price point is announced. But I would say if they went at nineteen ninety nine, they could probably avoid that drama and that conversation around their streaming network. So twenty and below, but I, I still think there's a strategy at keeping it at the same price. Well, I would like to think so, but I mean, you know, I was a I was a subscriber of Directv now, uh, whose parent uh-huh. company is AT and T, who is also with Time Warner Media or whatever it is. Uh, and they recently just jacked up their prices again by 15 bucks a month. So that has like gone up, I think 50% over the whole year. And, and mm-hmm. I canceled mine you know, a couple of months ago, but like AT&T, Warner Media, they are no strangers to just 
jacking that price right oh, up. Oh yeah, right and the the th- and it's not even the generation and the age gap anymore of where people choose to watch their stuff. We had uh, I had some in laws call uh, call today to the apartment, and they were just asking general questions of like, oh, what what streaming services do you have? Do you guys have cable? And they're le- they're just they're just trying to get like a they're just trying to get a survey rundown because they're like, yeah, our cable bill just went up. It's so expensive. And um, one of our uh, one of our other set of um, in laws just like a year or two ago just totally got rid of cable, which is really surprising. So like it doesn't even matter if you're a baby boomer anymore. They're just like I'm not gonna pay all for this when all the stuff I'm hearing about out there in the world is on a streaming network anyway. So, um, but it doesn't matter because I mean like uh, Comcast owns like NBC, which is gonna be Peacock anyway. So I guess if they're not selling cable anymore, they'll just sell Peacock to people. Yeah, they're, they'll find they'll find a way to get us, Mike. They will always <laughs> find a way to get us. Oh yeah, but if you don't have um, you know HBO and you want to wait and what get, is it HBO Go or now? Uh, H- uh, HBO right now. It's HBO. It's HBO Go. If you were an HBO cable subscriber and you wanted an app to watch it on the go. Okay. It's HBO now if you want it standalone, and then I believe it's just all going to go to HBO Max. Right, but right now, if you want to watch Watchmen, you can <laughs> HBO just... HBO now. now. Yep. Yeah, try that out. Or you can wait till I think it's eight or nine episodes. It's not mm-hmm. a long series uh, for, for season one, and... Um, I don't know if they've said anything about season two yet, but I, I well, we're gonna we're gonna be in some for some twists and turns. I feel for this show. On top of that, um, another kind of I guess this movie, this character has been through so many twists and turns in the, <laughs> the five years we've done this podcast, Mike. Mm-hmm. That I don't even know what to think. The Batman movie. And we're finally getting our first standalone Batman movie since recording Superhero Slate. For the, for the mm-hmm. first time, and uh, you know, other than uh, Robert Pattinson playing uh, Batman, uh, they have recently cast Zoe Kravitz to play Catwoman in this upcoming movie. Um, and also, the probably the bigger news is Paul Dano will play the Riddler slash Edward Nashton. Um, mm-hmm. People may remember him from the Jim Carrey version Edward Nigma, which is not his comic book origin. So, uh, Edward Nashton is the comic book origin version of the Riddler. Yeah, and just to get it all out there, I believe the other week when we talked about uh, Jonah Hill possibly being in this film, everybody automatically assumed Penguin, which makes sense. I mean, no no one's trying to like size shame or body shame or anything like that. But I mean, if you try to put uh, Jonah Hill in any Batman villain role, I think everybody automatically goes to the Penguin. I thought he could have been a cool Riddler as well. I believe I said that on the show, but it seems like... Paul Dano is going to be Riddler. It looks like Jonah Hill is out of the movie entirely, correct? Yes, he, he's not playing the Penguin. He's not appearing in the movie. Uh, whatever contracts, money, whatever, I don't, nobody knows what broke down. So um, as soon as that came out, um, literally like 10 minutes later, they were like, Paul Dano is the Riddler. Um, and then we have what was it, um, Jeffrey Wright, I believe, is also a Commissioner Gordon this time mm-hmm. around. So. Uh, this is this is shaping up. I think they'll probably be filming in what six months or so, maybe early next year. Do you think yes, they could start it, this? It seems like it's going to be cranking up soon. Uh, I didn't get a chance to see the lighthouse, which is going to be which is the the most recent um, the most recent movie that Robert Pattinson is in right now, and it's like this crazy wonky black and white movie <laughs> that's shot in like four by three. So I guess if you want to really break free from the image you have of him as a Twilight vampire go see The Lighthouse, because I've been hearing very good things about that movie, and I'm sure he's not going to be playing anything like a vampire in that. It looks very crazy. Willem Dafoe's in it. It looks nuts. It looks like it's like a, a thriller, a lot of intense uh, imagery there. Uh, I, I like Paul Dano. I know him mm-hmm. the most from Swiss Army Man, which is that crazy Daniel Radcliffe corpse movie where yep. he's like a jet ski and stuff. Paul Dano was great in that. I don't think I've really seen him in much else, the, but it's not like he hasn't done other things. Well, I always remember from uh, There Will Be Blood. I believe he was the son uh, of <laughs> oh, that. Oh, yeah. I've never seen that, but I, that does sound familiar. And uh, when I was in um, film school, he was I, – I swear to God he was in um, – the one that was like uh, the the Columbine type movie. Um, oh. and I don't remember what that was called. If I could, 
I can't, it's a, I, well, Bowling for Columbine is the documentary, so no, I don't think he would have been in that. No, it wasn't. It wasn't that one. I thought it was something else. I'll have to go maybe take a take a good look. Uh, yeah. Well, that, either way, Paul Dano gets a sign off for me. Uh, Zoe Kravitz, which I I was surprised to see that she was the voice of Catwoman in the Lego Batman movie. I didn't even really? I didn't even I didn't even know she Zoe Kravitz has really never been on my radar. Um, I don't know if there's I just haven't watched too many movies that she's been in. I mean, I, the most identified thing about her is the last name Kravitz so it's you know it, it's hard not to think about Lenny Kravitz when you think of Zoe Kravitz but um, yeah I got no problem with this casting you know, obviously when casting choices like this happen you see a lot of crazy people on the internet uh, blow everything out of proportion and all I have to do is say to these people like imagine Gotham it's a real city like with real people in it if you ever go to a large metropolitan city it's extremely diverse so like I don't understand it's just another crazy way for the internet to overreact so the casting it doesn't bother me whatsoever I think oh, it would yeah. be really fun and exciting one thing that I'm looking forward to is since this is, I would say, for all intents and purposes, it seems to be like a Batman reboot. We have a younger Batman. We're kind of starting from at least a, a beginning origins of the character in some way. I would love to see Catwoman, like, fleshed out a little bit more. It, every other movie she's been in, she's just been in for, like, one film, and she's just been kind of in and out. I It seems like for when it comes to, like, Batman-tier characters, Catwoman's very high on the list. She's awesome because she runs in this gray area between be, between being good and bad. She's, like, the only, like, solid, like, love interest that's ever stuck with Batman over the years. So I would love to see her character developed over a couple of movies. So I, I, hopefully this uh, this spirals out into a few other films, this casting. But yeah. yeah, so far I'm honestly shocked to say all of this Batman news is very exciting. Yeah, it's it's all adding up to be uh, on the positive side of everything. Uh, you know, uh, the director has been very passionate about very talk, talking when he talks in the news about it. All the, the actors don't seem to be rushed. They seem to be working pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, I don't know if you, you said this, I don't think I heard you, but Zoe Kravitz was in X-Men um, First Class. Uh, she had the wings. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. When I saw that she was cast, I looked it up, and I thought it was funny that we were thinking it would be a Storm from the X-Men. It ended up being another person from the X-Men. We didn't we didn't yeah. branch out to the other films when we were looking at those casting. No. So. Uh, apparently, um, Daisy Beats was also a, a front runner uh, for that as well, so that she'd have been pulled over from both Joker and the Deadpool uh, <laughs> movie. So uh, leave some comic book roles for other actresses, okay? Just <laughs> pump those brakes. So Batman on its way. Speaking of Joker, um, Todd Phillips uh, says he hates extended cut movies, hates deleted scenes, so that he doesn't think there will be any extended cuts or deleted scenes on any of the movies released. Now, will he have that final say or not for the home release? I don't know about the deleted scenes, but it looks like there will be no... Uh, extended cut Joker movie coming yeah, out. Yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if the studio maybe found a way to whip up like an unrated cut or something, but usually that would intend like a deleted scene or something. I Like, I don't know, maybe they can find like an extra swear word that they can throw in there, but Warner Brothers, the last, uh, last couple of releases, they've really been looking for those extended releases so mm-hmm. they can make a little bit extra money, but uh, the Joker seems to be a little bit of a lightning in the bottle for me. It's like a unique kind of scenario of uh, I don't think people are looking for that extended extra stuff yeah. but it would be I mean it would be cool to hear like commentary from Todd Phillips on the Joker oh exa- I mean commentary would be great you know and you know documentaries making of you know this this was a movie that nobody really wanted to be made um, mm-hmm. there was some other news you know this this week about Jared Leto like had like told his music manager to call the people at AT&T and Warner and told them not to make this movie because he wanted to be the Joker kind of thing. Yeah, I've heard I've heard mixed things about that as well because I guess it depends on what version of Leto you want to believe because he's been quoted in articles saying he was very on board with different versions of Joker. Like he understood that he was in a universe and different people could have different versions of the Joker. So honestly, that could just be him saving face for the press. Who knows what's actually going on? But I mean, Jared Leto, he's a front man for a, a very popular band. (laughs) 
you know, I could kind of see him getting a little like, you know, a little celebrity, a little bridezilla, if you will, about the character. It's not it's not beyond well, like megalomaniac he, celebrity. He definitely had the most beloved version of the Joker. Let's just give him <laughs> that, okay? Like, um, sure. But but also I think with that news and everything else that he will no longer be the Joker probably ever again. Like he he's probably burned by it. They're you know tired of him. This Joker that they were even trying to you know, make it say like you only get a small budget and, and they were like, fine, we'll make it on a small budget. And it's bringing in so many, you know, so much money, so many talks of accolades. So I, <laughs> that, I, that would be really funny if the smaller budget inadvertently made the film better. And that was on Jared Leto's hands. Obviously it's all rumors and conjecture, yeah. but that would be hilarious. He's like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll sink them by cutting their budgets with, uh, with my connections. Like, no, my connections made it all better. Yeah. Actually it made that much more money in the end. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I mean, uh, no, I, there's nothing from the Joker I think that needs uh, extra stuff. So I mean, if they like, here's a movie, here's what it is. Great, that's fine. I think that's a solid. The Suicide Squad is, you know, under filming's underway. We talked about last week. We saw some of the weirder characters, and now this week we get to see some of the bigger name characters with uh, Idris Elba, John Cena, and Viola Davis. Looks like they're filming in an Atlanta prison uh, with Idris Elba and John Cena in, you know, the standard orange jumpsuits you see in. Uh, prison people wear and viola davis being um oh what is her name again in this um uh amanda waller just you know hanging out walking around uh doing doing the thing so i mean i i don't want to keep banging on about these these set photos for this movie but i mean until we see some costumes you know this is still pretty fun they're making it yeah, they're not exactly uh, locking the set down for this version of uh, the Suicide Squad. Um, if you don't follow James Gunn already out there, people, on social media, uh, definitely follow him on Instagram. Because it seems like every other weekend he does basically a Q&A in the story section of his page. where Because now it's like a functionality. It's like a function that you can do in stories on Instagram where you can people can submit questions and you can answer it very easily. And like he was on like some sort of like extended flight or traveling somewhere and he answered probably close to like 50 questions. And a lot of people were asking him about like Suicide Squad and asking him, oh, was there any characters that you wanted to include that you couldn't include? Uh, and he was just like, no, he had, it seems like he had total free range to put whatever characters in Suicide Squad that he wanted. Nobody was off limits, probably because it's James Gunn who made Guardians of the Galaxy. So if you get, if you're lucky enough through the c- tr- crazy circumstances of the universe to get him at Warner Brothers, you let him do whatever he wants to do with any character that he wants. And also, it, there seemed to be like a notion that before Suicide Squad even happened, it seemed like he had the choice to make whatever movie he wanted as well. So I'm not surprised that he gravitated to a group like the Suicide Squad, which a lot of people were comparing to Guardians of the Galaxy when that first movie came out anyway. So uh, yeah, do yourself a favor, follow James Gunn on social media, and you'll get some nice little nuggets and gems like that. Yeah, I mean, they, they hired him, they picked him up right when Disney quote-unquote fired him. So I mean, mm-hmm. like... You know, how do you get, like, hey, we want you? And he's just like, well, I mean, there's probably a chance I could go back to Disney. What do you <coughs> give me? Like, pick, take your pick. Yours. Yeah, whatever you want. We're here to pay you money. We, 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 want, we want you to print money for us. So, <laughs> so, so do that thing. So you can check out those photos in our notes. Uh, those are over on no, justjared.com. You no, know it would be really great. I don't know about the legality of this, but when the Suicide Squad trailers start to come out, I would love to see from the creators of Guardians of the Galaxy. That would yeah. that would just be like a big like just punch in the kidney to Marvel. Well, would it though? Would it? Because then you know, it, worst case, I mean, he's done two of those and he's going to have a third one. I mean, who knows if he'll do more Suicide Squad. This could yeah. be a one and done over here. Well, we'll find out. <laughs> yeah, we will. Um before we jump into this next topic, Mike, I just want to say I called this. I called it. I told everyone in the past two days. I've I so said this was going to happen. You did. I'll pat. I'll virtually pat you on the back. Thank man. you. Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker. The final trailer is confirmed for tomorrow, and with that trailer, what's it come with? Tickets. Tickets. <laughs> so, um, as Mike says, pull up your websites, pull up your apps, have it all ready to go. It's mm-hmm. going to be during Monday Night Football. There's no time going on here. So uh, be ready to buy those. Uh, some mm. theaters locally, they were showing the times before this dropped uh, officially on Twitter. They're showing it two hours and 35 minutes long for mm. this movie, which um, it's about on par with all the other Star Wars movies. So I'm not really mm-hmm. too surprised. Uh, and we are exactly 
today, two months away, December yep. 20th, 2019. Yeah. Do do yourself a favor. If you're somebody that buys your tickets through like a big, bigger website like Fandango, make sure and check if your local movie theater has its own website. Because I go to a Cinemark movie theater which I can also buy tickets through Fandango with. But Fandango has its own server. Cinemark has another one. So if you can go to the, the smaller location, like the Cinemark server, it's probably not going to have as big of a hit on it as Fandango. So, you know, just just do your best. Have your options laid out there because, as we've known in the past, the, the Star Wars will choke will choke a bitch, if you, if you will. <laughs> will choke that server to death. This is essentially the last mainline Star Wars movie, right? You know, wraps mm-hmm. up nine films, so Skywalker Saga. This is the same that Endgame did earlier this year. <coughs> and what happened to Endgame ticket sales, Mike? It broke the internet for mm-hmm. a very long time. So, um, you know, just just be ready for it. This isn't this isn't your uh, your, your average run of the mill kind of thing. So just uh, just kind of have it ready and, and go for that. I'm mm-hmm. I'm excited. I'm I'm gonna. You know, uh, my my tips are always during the game, have it pulled up because someone might accidentally turn it on well before they're supposed to. Oh yeah, we like in the past we've had like almost definitive times when the trailer would air and the tickets would go on sale sometimes like ten minutes beforehand. So like yeah, just just be there and be ready. Yeah, I'm, I'm very very excited for this. Um, I, I want I want to see me some Star Wars, Mike. So mm-hmm. let's do this. But in the, before that, before we even get into The Rise of Skywalker, we get to watch The Mandalorian. Uh, and I was looking earlier, and early previews, reviews, are online for this show um, before they hit. I think there was some sort of press junket where they get to watch the, maybe the first or first few episodes. Uh-huh. Um, so if you want to go in clean like I do, I'm going to avoid those for now. But uh, if you want to check it out, you're on the fence. Can John Favreau do Star Wars as well as Disney and Marvel and everything else in the world? Let's do it. Yeah, I don't think John Favreau has made anything bad yet. I mean, there's been uh, there's been different levels of quality, but the great thing with like with a TV show is you know there's showrunners, there are different directors. It's a big collaborative effort. So I would say that's almost a perfect scenario for a director who's gotten really big. Because unfortunately, we've seen in the past some directors get so big and powerful, no one wants to tell them no anymore. But in a TV show environment, it's it might not even matter. Like John Favreau might not even be there every day on set. Somebody else is writing the scripts. So uh, there's there's a lot going. Going for this show, so I mean, I've already paid for three years of Disney Plus, so I'll be there day one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm gonna be there. Um, I'm, I'm gonna check it out, whatever, whatever it is. Uh, and even um, you know, the list of directors is huge. You know, there's a lot of quality of people going into this, and uh, they also unveiled that Taika Waititi directed the last episode of season one. They let they left it up to him to wrap up mm, the season, if you will. I'm guessing John Favreau directs episode one. So yeah. if uh, Taika is getting the last episode, you got you got six wild ones in the middle. You got to figure out who's directing. Yeah, well, they have a list of them. We just don't know. Well, this might even be online. I didn't I didn't look too hard into this. Um, but uh, season two, I think, is already in production with John Favreau, and then um, oh, um, you know that hand clap thing you do with Arnold Schwarzenegger, you put online all the time. Who's that guy? Carl Weathers. Carl Weathers oh, is also directing the hand clap well. thing. I was like, uh, okay, I was like, I'm thinking Carl Weathers' name. Uh, he's also directing an episode in season two. So, oh wow! Okay, uh, they're they're moving right along on that. I think that season two uh, production of season two on a very expensive, probably Star Wars show is probably a good sign, right? Like mm-hmm. Disney's got some faith in this. Yep. Okay, probably gonna carry the um, Disney Plus thing for a little bit because I am not interested at all in the Cassian Andor show <laughs> right now. There, <laughs> Who there's nothing, is even this little bit of news? A tiny, tiny bitty bit of news that Tony Gilroy, the writer of Rogue One, the the second writer, the one who wrote it as it currently is. Uh, will write this show as well. Yeah, it's just, it's weird talking about this show because I don't hate the movie Rogue One. You know, I don't usually think back on it wanting to go rewatch it a million times. It's not my favorite Star Wars movie, but it did some cool, interesting things, and we all remember the badass ending, which uh, really uh, any fanboy would have loved to see, you know, Darth Vader just chop up a hallway of people. Like, that was badass. There's nothing more exciting than watching that and then going right into, like, New Hope Star Wars. It's just, like, a great transition. Um but I mean, okay. I mean, I guess you're gonna explore Cassian. We all know how he dies. So I'm just getting big prequelitis out of this, and I don't know. K2SO. He's the only. He's the only yeah. savior right now. I just want to see that robot be silly a little bit more. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe this will highlight something that we didn't know we wanted. But I'm. I'm just not feeling. I'm not. 
feeling now, this one bit. I don't. I don't know. Have we gotten a title for what this show is called at no, all? Not yet. So my the, the idea I'm pitching is you bring in Cassie and Andor and you kill them off at the end of season one. It would be the most shocking move. People wouldn't expect it. And then you can just bring in a brand new character and you can just go off on a totally different trajectory. We don't have to worry about that character but, anymore. But they can't kill them off unless they just play the last episode as Rogue One. Well, maybe that's what they do. They just do a flash. Maybe he just go rides off into the sunset, and then we just continue on with the. The, the last episode can be the <coughs> they they can do what they did with Rogue One, but the last episode up against the movie of Rogue One. Yeah, and then they clone K two S O because it, I don't know if this has ever been said in the Star Wars lore anywhere else because all of these droids have been personified very heavily with unique personalities, but it just seems like. Why don't you go ahead and just clone K2SO in a different robot, and then uh, we can have Alan to carry on. Yeah. I mean, IG-88 does that. He's got multiple copies. Yeah, it's easy there you to go. Do. But, yeah, no, no, nothing interesting there. Venom 2 uh, seems to be shaping up pretty quick, Mike, with Andy Serkis directing it. And uh, there was news this week that they will feature the villain, the Marvel villain Shriek, who has the ability to manipulate sound. She was originally a mutant in the comic mm-hmm. books, but she'll be played also today by Na- Naomi Harris. Who uh, was the Money Penny in the new Bond movies? Uh, okay, yeah, I think I, I think I remember her. I mean, I don't know if Shriek it, it normally comes across symbiotes in the Marvel Cinematic Universe because yes. I'm not too familiar with her. But I mean, it makes sense. I mean, we know sound waves is what you know is separating the symbiote usually from the host. So I could see this character being very integral. I don't know if if she'll be good, bad, somewhere in the middle. But you know, you could always expect sound vibrations at some point in a Venom story. You know. Yeah, well, I mean, the next bullet point is that in when she was interested in the comics, she actually allied herself with Carnage. Ooh. So, uh, villain. Definitely, <coughs> definitely a villain. It also says we'll feature the villain shriek in the new. <laughs> but, but, you know, <laughs> it's right, fine. It's fine. Um, so, I, my guess is Carnage also share, he shares the weaknesses Venom has, right? Mm-hmm. So, if he has the ability uh, you know, to be weak to sound, maybe by allying himself with this, it is, a, 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 I guess, a defense against Venom, who, yep. who would be... You know that, so um, I think this is fine. I think this movie is shaping up to be much better than the first one. Do you think? Do you think you agree with that? With all the people I, I, lined up? I mean, I hope so. I feel like it's been a really, really, really long time since a movie has just gradually gotten better through installments. So maybe, maybe this will be like the first six episodes of Parks and Rec, where everyone says, "Oh, just stick with it. It gets really, really good." Maybe in like ten years, when we have this huge Venom franchise, we'll just tell people, "Oh, yeah, yeah, you just gotta make it through the first one, and then Andy Circus comes on board and makes everything better." Yeah. I, I can cross my fingers, and then maybe at some point in time, maybe by Venom Four. Uh, Marvel just ends up buying Paramount and Sony all together, and then they can just like spin it off and do it up in in a, in a big fashion. But well, who knows? It, it it kind of follows the same trajectory. I mean, that's what Thor did. I mean, you can Thor one. I think it's good. Thor two is not good at all. But by the time you get to Ragnarok, you're like, hell yeah! Are <laughs> right, you telling me I have to wait for a third Venom movie until I'm excited? <laughs> well, not necessarily, but it's been done before in Marvel movies. I'm I'm not telling people you need to go out and watch the dark world right away i'm like you can probably skip this and be okay so i mean there's some there's some precedent before in comic book movies we'll just we'll set to keep an eye on this one and and see what see what it does Uh deadpool uh has been confirmed to be able to uh play in an r-rated marvel universe um from the from the directors uh, or not the directors the writers they were like we talked to marvel you know whenever they bought the x-men and, and fox and merged them all over and they said that he can still play in this r-rated universe which we've talked about before he doesn't uh-huh. really need to interact with anybody he can just do his own little thing uh make fun of like you said once show up with mouse ears and all that other fun stuff uh-huh. uh and then also this week ryan reynolds uh was recently stopped in the marvel studios office and got a photo there so uh chances are maybe talks about deadpool 3 are moving along at a pretty good rate yeah, I, I mean, I think this is all very good news. Uh, props to Kevin Feige for basically not fixing something that's broken. Uh, the big question that I'm curious about is, does Deadpool ever cross over into a PG-13 movie? Right. Um, I, could, I, would, I think he would be a really fun cameo. Like, maybe he just pops in for a little bit. I don't know what movie it is. And maybe just before he's about to swear and say something extremely gratuitous, like Thor, like, throw throws a hammer at him, and then he just flies off into the horizon, and we never get to see it. You know, so there's funny things you could do with the character. But I think more realistically what we see is now we don't have to see, like, the James McAvoy cameo anymore. Maybe now we could see, like, wouldn't it be hilarious 
if they got Chris Evans to come back as old man Cap in a Captain in a Deadpool movie, that would be so funny. He could just make all these old people jokes about him and stuff, and just like, oh, why are you looking so old? Like, what universe are you from? Are you, are well, you still? Like, you know, there, there's just so much you can do now because now his reference, his reference pool has just exploded. Well, I think there's also an opportunity here for to parody a lot of Marvel stuff. I mean, you mentioned mm-hmm. the old man Cap. Yeah, that's fine. But what about the Spider-Man movies where Captain America turns the chair around and sits down and is like, so, you got yourself in detention, huh? But it's like Deadpool versions of that stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and it's just, you know, <clears throat> a little already. So, yeah, the, maybe the reference pool, the, the, the parody pool opens up a little bit. And I think, honestly, don't tie him into the current Marvel Universe yet. You can actually use this new X-Men franchise as a way to maybe introduce him in a little you know, slower and mm-hmm. then, and then branch him into the larger stuff later for, for the cameos. So, yeah, he, uh, I mean, the, the character is just so meta. Like, I think we, we've said this like so many times, they're just so lucky with the type of character that this is because he could, they could, they could literally start Deadpool three where he just like wakes up in a bed and they could retcon the entire first two films if they wanted to by saying, wow, what a crazy dream that was. I don't think they would go to that lengths. But he could always just like wake up and just be like, oh, wow, why does, it, why does everything just feel a little different now? You know, they could just do something as subtle as that. So they just, they really, they're just really lucky that Ryan Reynolds nailed it right the first time out. So he's just like, he future-proofed himself. He could, he could bounce between any studio for, if for some weird, bizarre reason, like... I don't know, Kevin Feige lost Deadpool in a poker game to Warner Brothers. He could go play in Warner Brothers really easily if he wanted to with all the Justice League. So uh, it's just it's a perfect character to be in this situation. Yeah, and if you, you can't poke fun at yourself, what's the point? You know, mm-hmm. so um, <clears throat> I, I agree. I think I think he'd be a good, a good addition. It'd be really fun. I'm looking forward to seeing what that third one holds, especially because at the end of it, I mean... Again, I, I think Deadpool 2 introduces Cable fine, but does not utilize Cable to his full advantage. Cable needs to be utilized way more uh, with, with Josh Brolin, and they need to have more, you know, play with that. So maybe maybe they can dive into that a little more for, for the third one. And maybe that could that could really just bring into the X-Men, like, a lot more, because, you yeah. know, since Cable is the... Technically, one of the sun, you know, a sun cyclops from the future. Yeah. So. Also, also in a, in a strategic fashion, um, like if he's in his rated R universe, is he is he also technically in the MCU as well? But he's just always in a different city at a different place and time. Or maybe we just don't overthink it that much and we just let him do whatever he wants to do. The only reason I bring that up is because he is a mutant. Um, And they talk about mutants plenty of times in his movie. So if Deadpool 3 comes out before any X-Men movie, do they just play down the word mutant? Or, you know, do they want to boot the X-Men back in first before they bring back Deadpool? But I feel like that would be way too long. You don't want to sit on a you don't want to sit on a moneymaker like Ryan Reynolds that long, you know? Right, but if they wanted to be like, you know, if if they cast these and they were making the production of X-Men, they could have those people show up, I guess, is, is the thing. Because they've already referenced every other X-Men movie beforehand in there. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, even, even you know, um, Hugh Jackman is, is Wolverine. So, you know, they're, we, we can't overthink Deadpool because if we do, then that becomes totally, totally, totally irrelevant mm-hmm. at that point. So, I, I'm excited for that. But, in that note, also... I don't know if this was before or after Ryan Reynolds' meetings. Kevin Feige got a huge promotion over at Marvel. Yes, wow. Uh, promoted to the <coughs> chief creative officer for Marvel as a whole. So he dun, will actually... <laughs> dun, 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 dun. He's graduated. Dun, uh, yeah, he, dun, yes. Dun, dun. <laughs> it took him forever to get there. Uh, but he will now oversee film, television, and publishing. Now, does that mean he'll have his hands in everything? No. But... I think, you know, this is the end of old Marvel television, and this is a new era for the television we're going to be getting going forward. Yeah, this is this is a unique thing. I guess it just depends on if you're a glass half full or ha- glass half empty type of person, the way you look at this. I would say the negative way you could approach this is like ne- you're, put, you're putting more responsibility on Kevin Feige, so he has to trust the people underneath him to execute, you know, the vision that he's probably been able to be more hands-on with. So now he's going to be looking at TV, which makes a lot of sense, you you know, when it comes to um, when it comes to stuff happening on Disney Plus, I, I wonder if Jeff Loeb is sweating. If he's a little bit worried, you know, that used to be his universe. I mean, he had to have known something was going to well, happen. He could be doing the animated shows because those don't really matter. 
Uh, like yeah. The, like the offenders and all that stuff. He could play in the, the animated universe and the television channels all day long with that stuff. Yeah, that could be that could be totally true. So, uh, you know, you could also also maybe be a little worried oh, if he's concentrating on TV, who's going to be worrying about uh, movies. But it seems like, uh, uh, I mean, eventually uh, everybody wants to grow or move on or do something new. So I think this this new challenge is really good. And Kevin Feige hasn't really gave us a reason to worry at all about anything. And a good a good boss, a good leader, and a good manager. A, creates good teams and it seems like he's done a really good job doing that so I'm sure there's people underneath him who are also looking forward to uh, getting promotions and taking on more responsibilities I, I kind of even look m even more forward now he's got this CCO position so now he's really high up at a company so he was really important before so now he's really important with the title so it's weird you can almost kind of imagine maybe at a point in time where Kevin Feige could go up even higher and maybe he's just at Disney proper and he's overlooking just Disney in general. Who knows? Uh, I mean, obviously we know Iger is retiring and somebody else is replacing him. I don't remember who it was. I don't know if it's like official yet. I think I think it's been said who's taking him over, but who knows? Maybe it could be Feige after that. We'll have to find out. But, you know, this is, this is awesome. This is good to hear. I'm glad that now television is finally going to be in the same realm as the movies. Right, and, and and while people can enjoy the <laughs> Netflix versions, I, I, you know, honestly, I don't think about them at all whenever I think about Marvel. So mm -hmm. you know, I'm I'm excited to see how this works, how we can get more, again, to be honest, more Marvel content per year <coughs> without having to go to the theater every two months. You mm -hmm. know, because a production on a movie takes a long time; they're making these year in advance. So if he has the ability to control the Disney Plus productions, the movie productions, and tell more stories back and forth. Uh, hell, yeah. I mean, that, we're, I think we're going to see actually a whole different phase two or whatever, or phase four, five that um, is is a little more integrated, a little more smaller stories to build up for a bigger payoff later on. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, if he's got that ability to, to oversee that now and, and can control that and put those people in place that he needs to, yes, we're going to see more benefits from this. So, um, <clears throat> kudos, kudos to him. And um, if he needs someone to help fill his old role, we are available. We will, we will take that role. <laughs> yeah, we can help. If you're looking for something to do tonight, you're bored. Bored. Bored as hell. Uh, <laughs> Disney has released a three-hour cut showcasing all of the content available on November 12th for Disney+. Plus. And this yeah. is just ridiculously frustrating because I'm very interested in seeing this. It's all in chronologically released order. Mm -hmm. So, like, the first thing is what? Snow White, right? Or something like that. And then the last thing is The Mandalorian. So it's all the way across. All these things. And I will tell you, they play the same damn song <laughs> over and over again. And they don't put any of the dialogue in. Which is frustrating. Because if they didn't have like little cuts of dialogue before they cut all these things, I would, I would totally watch a little bit more just to hear what they're saying and, and yeah. what's going on but now you can't hear a word I just can't stand it man <laughs> yeah this this almost serves it seems to serve like no purpose if you will it almost seems like oh if disney was like throwing like a cocktail party and they wanted to put something up on the monitor that like would take a long time the loop and you know this would be it uh, i talked at the top of the show about the tweet thread they had a single tweet for every th every single item coming November 12th, it took me forever to scroll through it, but it was kind of nice. It served a little bit more of a function because you could find just a weird, obscure title. You could comment on that title. You could retweet it. Um, it was really interesting statistically because I was scrolling through and you could see what people were really excited about because you could see the hearts and the retweets on stuff. So if it was more of like an obscure title, you might see maybe like a hundred likes. So this was a, the day that it was coming out. So it could be different now. And then once you got to the more popular titles like Disney's like Aladdin and stuff like that, you might see around like 1,000, 2,000 likes. But I was actually really surprised to see a big, a big upswell for the animated Marvel stuff. Like I would see like like the X-Men, the Fantastic Four, Iron Man, 90 Spider-Man. When I scrolled to those, those had like over like four or 5,000 likes on it. So people are really excited uh, for these animated properties to return. And, 
you know, Disney is going to have total control over this stuff now, these animated properties. They're going to have the analytics. Wouldn't it just be insane to get a new season of the 90s X-Men or a new season of 90s Spider-Man? I mean, that would just blow me away to see if they could do that. And Marvel could uh, totally do that. I mean, it's totally under their power to do that. That would be nuts. I don't know if it was in my head or out loud or in one of our things i don't know if it was on the show but the x-men animated series people are like yeah we'd make we totally make a season five uh right now if they let us so i mean bringing this in you know being able to do that would be interesting uh, you know they have a lot of that what they brought back roseanne and all these other shows like the uh-huh. nostalgia factors kicking in you know they could easily jump on that and they don't have to do a whole lot with it to make it look good yeah they, just they make don't it look like it did yeah and they don't even have to make a lot of them i mean if you think about it i don't think people are looking for quantity when they have nostalgia they want they want quality. Like the same when all of these Nickelodeon uh, reboot refreshes came out. Like I didn't need a whole new season of Hey Arnold, but a movie was great. Um, so they could even do like a one-shot X-Men movie. They could just have a really nice animated like 10 episodes of a more 90s X-Men and just have it really nicely polished and animated. Man, people would go people would just like fawn over something like that so if you want to go check out that tweet thread a lot of memes were spiraled out of that because there was this these bizarre like 1940s movies that people were just like what is like the biscuit eater like i think that was literally like a title it was like it looked like to be a movie about like a farm dog or something like that so uh, a lot of obscure stuff in there but it's going to be a very robust title but if you go to if you go to disneyplus.com right now we are at 22 days 11 hours 34 minutes and 18 seconds and you and it looks like you can still get a discount now you can pay the seven dollars a month if you'd like or you can get a whole year for 70 bucks which breaks down to about five dollars and 80 cents so you can save roughly you know a dollar a month if you just uh, buy a whole year so you, you you're, you're you've missed out on the three-year deal but you can still get the year-long deal yeah, uh, and I think a lot of these are, in fact, Disney movies, I think. But I did see some of this. I think it had the show Recess in, in listed in yeah, the Yeah, well. yeah, they, they, they own, because that was like an A, I think that was an ABC morning yeah. show, morning morning show. Yeah, I mean, I'm scrolling through this now. I put I put the link in here because it's their pinned tweet on Disney Plus's thing right now. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I'm looking at, like, the adventures of Bullwhip Griffin. And I'm like, <laughs> like, what the hell is that? <laughs> yeah, the the barefoot executive, and it's got Kurt Russell in it. So, uh, yeah, there's over 600 replies in this thread alone. Uh, I think they're all Disney anyway. So, um, you can go check that out, and if you want a, a good time suck for all this, I think that someone also said on that video it's 10 minutes longer than in games re-release. So <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's funny. That's 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 a good you know example of how that video lives. And on Disney Plus, one of the shows we're excited for next year is Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And um, I think uh, um, Sebastian Stan was at a con recently, maybe this weekend, and he said that production starts on Monday, tomorrow, uh, for us. So, I mean, that means we might be seeing some set photos. We might be getting a little bit more word out about it, what's going on. Bust out those telephoto lenses, folks. I want to see their new costumes. They're going to have new costumes, so get your telephoto lenses polished, get them propped up on tripods, get those exposures ready. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Baron Zemo is going to be in this. That was the the leak at what was it? Um, some some sort of convention earlier in the year, mm-hmm. um, and stuff like that. So, uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier productions going on. We will be following this and, and letting people know because this is the first Disney Plus Marvel movie that they're, they're, or Marvel show they're kicking off with. So, mm-hmm. um, I'm, I'm interested to see how the, how this goes. And then down the road, probably I think the next one after that uh, is not maybe it's Loki and then WandaVision here. Uh, WandaVision, some of the leaked stuff coming out is that it's a six-episode series. I thought it was more, but um, it, it, it could be. But the first three episodes are like an American sitcom with Wanda and Vision and like, you know, Leave it to Beaver-style household. And they have two young kids um, in, in this whatever Vision reality manipulated thing that Wanda's creating here. And then the last three are where it starts to go really crazy and creepy and starts to tie it into Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Whoa, I love that idea. It sounds like they're really leaning into uh, this trippiness. So, I mean, I guess you I guess you just try to put yourself in Wanda's shoes after Endgame. I mean, she's lost the love of her life. They weren't able to get him back or who knows, maybe they were really close to getting him back, you know, but that didn't really work. Maybe uh, Shuri was working on reviving him and then they lost him for a second time and she just snaps. She just loses it. So... Man, this yeah. is going to be nuts. This is going to be so crazy. Well, what's crazy about her story is what we don't realize is, like, she literally watches Vision die twice, 
and then is dusted, and then is brought back immediately into a fight with Thanos, who she almost beat, by the way. She would yeah. totally beat him. I don't uh, even know who you are. So, like, within, like, five minutes, can you imagine what this lady went through? Mm-hmm. Like, in her time, you know, because she was gone. And oh, yeah, and that that's right. There really isn't any time gap there. Like, uh, dead, dead, then you vanish, and then you come back trying to get your revenge right away, and then you're just settled with this aftermath. Man. Yeah, so, I mean, we well, we've had time to think about it, and there's been five years in the universe. She had no time at all, yeah. so. Your brother's also dead, too. Yeah, yeah, and no one, no one's living. No one's living around her. So don't be friends with her. You, it's, it's bad. It's bad for everyone. <laughs> her hometown got thrown up, thrown to the ground. Like, yeah, that's true. Sokovia is gone too, man. It's, but she <laughs> lost her accent, and that's what matters. Yeah. <laughs> Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Speaking of that, um, Jade Bartlett, who uh, was most recently known for being having a blacklist script called Miller's Girl. Okay. Uh, will work on the script for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Now, does that mean she will write it or work on it with C. Robert Cargill, who was also reported to return? I'm not sure. We're not sure what his status is, but uh, she will be working on this movie as well for the for the upcoming sequel. So hmm. probably tying it out of, you know, uh, WandaVision and then making it its own thing itself. Yeah, I try not to worry too much about writers for big budget franchise movies. Smaller movies, it makes a little bit more sense. But these big movies, it's, the script's going to go through so many different revisions and stuff like that. So uh, well, it, the, the story gets owned by so many different different people, and then eventually it makes it to the director, who kind of has final say on what exactly uh, what exactly gets filmed. Yeah, and then um, you know, Feige's got his long term plan anyway. So it's like, here's where the movie starts. Here's where it mm-hmm. needs to end. So. Get but the good for from but AB. good for Jay uh, good for Jay Bartlett because yeah. that's a that's a good get it's a good thing for your career yeah it's, I mean if you don't know what the, the blacklist is if you write something in Hollywood and it's turned into people want it you go you go up on the blacklist and this like short list is like people who are up and coming you want to hire them you want to work with them because they've done some really good work. Yeah. And, and it um, just, it's always really confused me because the blacklist is a good thing, but usually people would think blacklist would be bad. Like you don't want to be on the blacklist because either somebody's trying to murder the people on that list yeah. or it's like a banned list. So it gets a little confusing. It is, but blacklist is great. So that's, that's good for her. And, and you know, uh, you know, new blood in, in, in the Marvel universe. That's fine. We love mm-hmm. it. We embrace it. Uh, Black Widow is coming out next May. Um, we know this. I'm hoping a trailer maybe comes <laughs> up with Star Wars later this year. Oh, uh, yeah, possibly. Uh, so Scarlett Johansson uh, was also, I, th- I don't think at a convention, but maybe somewhere, she was talking about the notes that this movie is the first Marvel movie to be produced by one of its actors mm-hmm. herself. So that's great. But also referred to it as a standalone franchise. So what? if you thought this might be the <laughs> last Black Widow movie, maybe not. Maybe, maybe she may not be in it going forward. She may get her closure, but there's always a Black Widow. There's always a spy you need in, in the Avengers, right? So mm-hmm. maybe this Yelena Belova character is it, or maybe it sets up someone else to be that down the road. I don't know. Um, I can go either way on this, really. E- either one's fine. What about you? Yeah. Uh, I mean, the the fact that it's the first Marvel movie to be produced by one of his actors, uh, that's a whole other thing that I usually don't put too much weight on because like a producer role is almost more about money than it is about creativity or talent or anything like that. I mean, um, Scarlett Johansson has been in this franchise just as long or longer than most people, so I'm not surprised that she was just like, oh, this is my last movie. I'm not going to do it unless I get a producer credit, so I wouldn't really look too far into that. But yeah, I mean, I guess I haven't really mulled around the idea of the mantle of Black Widow continuing um, after this movie. But, uh, yeah, I, I suppose it's definitely a possibility. Well, well, I think also she is the, um, I guess, other than General Ross, who really is just a side character, is a main character. She's been in the second longest to Tony Stark. She was in Iron Man 2. Mm-hmm. Um, so having that you know knowledge and, and, and being with that character for so long and being in so many other movies and not having her solo movie, being a producer, she would probably, again, you say it's money, but she can create that character. She can wrap up the character as she sees fit for that character because she did just kind of die on screen and got no, you know, there was no celebration of her life at the end of in game, mm-hmm. just Tony Stark. So well, we, well, she'll, uh, she'll move on from the Marvel universe and then she'll probably, you know, go play a, go play a tree somewhere. Maybe mm-hmm. in the next planet earth documentary. She is going to be a Kira. <laughs> and Taika Waititi gets around to making it Kira. Oh god! I think uh, since it is con convention season, I, think I saw a cosplay of uh, some uh, some Asian girl at a convention, and she was just wearing like a plain white t shirt, and it just said Scarlett Johansson <laughs> on it. And I was just like, oh man, she's getting she's getting digged from all angles. This is really funny. Yeah, 
Yeah, exactly. Or she might play the next Joker. No, hey, yeah. yeah. We, we need another Joker. <laughs> Thor, Love and Thunder, coming right along. There's an ongoing debate. Taika Waititi said he's out doing Jojo Rabbit um, talks right now, uh, premieres. And there's an ongoing debate about Thor's weight in the upcoming movie. Should he <laughs> say Fat Thor or really go back to regular? Oh, wait. Thor? Okay. Um, yeah, I, I don't... I mean, what do you do? It would be funny since Thor is very much a c- c- comedic franchise, a comedic character now. And um, Love and Thunder, we saw the logo for it. It's very reminiscent of kind of like 80s sci-fi, you know. You want um, a montage? Yeah, a montage, exactly. Yeah. Wouldn't that be so hilarious? Do you like just get like this like this like eighties like up, upbeat like rock music and he's like push it to the limit and then he's just like, you know, doing bench press. That would be really funny. That would totally fit in a Taika Waititi film. Yeah, exactly. And you know, I mean that means, you know, he did also say that the script for this movie is finished. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we've got Natalie uh, Portman returning as Jane Foster and um um What's her name? Returning as Valkyrie. I can't think of her name. She's in every movie right now. Oh, Tessa Thompson. Tessa Thompson. Um, so you know they've got they've got a lot going on there with other characters. But you know Thor's weight is is it relevant or is it you know was it just to show in game that he had you know even though he was depressed and, and gained a lot of weight over those five years you know he was still worthy at the yeah. end of the at, day. So at the at the very least they have to explain it because the last time we saw that fool he was fat. Yeah. So yeah, there's got to be a there's got to be at least a one off line that says he went back <laughs> to the gym. Yeah, or if he's out, you know, battling, you know, things in the in in space with the guardians, you know, maybe maybe he just mm-hmm. lost it naturally over time. I, I don't know how space. Yeah, works over that's there. gonna be that's gonna be a fun component too because last we saw him, he did leave with the guardians. So since we're not gonna be getting guardians before Love and Thunder, you know, I wonder if maybe we'll see them again briefly as he like he you know waves goodbye to him or something like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or or you know he he leaves them back with their leader, quote unquote leader Star Lord. Because um, that end scene's pretty good with him. I mean, side eyes. He's like, of course. Of course. Ant Man 3, while people, you know, most movies at Marvel are getting sequels, tri- triples, you know, even. Um, Ant Man, people are wondering, will there be an Ant Man 3? Um, especially with his larger role in, uh, you know, in game. Uh, currently, the company, I use this lightly, company, Pym Particles Productions 3 LLC has been formed could be leading into a pre-production for this third film. They could be working on it as a Phase hmm. 5 movie and uh, working working on that a little bit. Yeah, it, I mean, it would be bizarre to not make this movie. I think we all know it's coming eventually. Um, uh, since, you know, I was, a little, I was a little bummed out by the second movie, so I still have to wait to hear more, like, villains, plot lines, casting. I'll just use this as an opportunity to say, go watch... Paul Rudd's interview on Hot Ones, the the Hot Chicken Wing interview episode on YouTube. It is the it is the best one by far so far. So I think they've done like seven or eight episodes of Hot Ones now. They've interviewed tons of celebrities. The Paul Rudd Paul Rudd one was great. He's a great interviewer or an interviewee, if you will. He does like some really hilarious stuff on it. They do like uh, the interview Sean Evans. Uh, they do like this little like acting scene at the very end. It's just it's just so funny. It's so great. He's such a great guy i love everything that he's in so i'm i'm always on board anything paul rudd he's he had something come out on netflix this weekend i'm not really sure what it is it he, he's he, he played like plays himself, himself. Yeah. i don't know if it's like a clone situation a twin situation or like a mental disorder situation where he sees another version of himself i have no idea but i believe it's marketed as a limited series so we might not even get another one of these but paul rudd's out there people yeah he is he's also my photo right here just like i said <laughs> last week i'm looking at him right there when i was with him um yeah, Ant Man three. There's an opportunity here for um, uh, his daughter, who's now grown five years, to become stature and use her powers. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also have again um, Hope's mom back from the uh, microverse. We could go back to the microverse. Hell, let's go in there, see what's going on. So um, there's there's op- a lot of opportunities here. Let's see where it goes. Have some fun with it. Lastly, the Miss Marvel show, which was added on at what New York, not New York Comic Con, D twenty three this year, they added Miss Marvel, Moon Knight, and She Hulk. Uh, while we thought this might be a series much later, it is rumored to start filming already in April of twenty twenty. Wow, that's soon. Is that because she is going to require a lot of FX for her embiggening powers to stretch and and become larger and do all that stuff? Do you think that might be why they need it? 
That could be a possibility. I I wonder also if... um, I mean, there's so much tied up in her character specifically. I mean, a few weeks ago, I threw around the idea of maybe they change her origin and make her a mutant, and they use that to slowly move into the mutants. Uh, obviously, last week, we talked about the ideas of the Inhumans possibly coming back, um, and she is an Inhuman, and maybe they also want to try to capitalize on her being in the Avengers video game that comes out early next year. Uh, so maybe there's just like, this is the time for Miss Marvel. We got to get her going. So maybe this is what's kind of pushing the Inhumans thing along in the MCU more than anything else, just <laughs> well, her character. I don't think we talked about last week. I think it feels like last week. But now, sit down, everybody. I've got <laughs> some exciting news here. Because they are talking about recasting the Royal Inhumans for this Miss Marvel show. Wow. And I never thought I'd see the day uh, that we could forget <laughs> that old show. That just wipe it which, from, which from is the really plate. which is really funny cuz if you watch that 3-hour video or that tweet thread, the Inhumans is on that thread. Well, yeah, no. No one has to watch it. Just, just ignore <laughs> it. But what's interesting is the rumored actors for these uh, Inhumans are in fact people who've been in Marvel already. Uh, Mm -hmm. with Black Bolt being played by Vin Diesel, who was rumored to do this years ago when Inhumans was making its first, you know, film debut. Um, And then also uh, Maximus uh, the Mad, his brother, by Aaron Taylor Johnson, who plays Quicksilver. Wow. Uh, Well, who played Quicksilver, I guess. (laughs) I guess if uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson does come back as Maximus, safe to say Wanda's brother ain't going to be coming back in any way. But if this happens, if somehow Wanda crosses paths with Aaron Taylor Johnson, there's got to be a line or something like, you look so familiar, or like, wow, you look like my brother. Like, you know, there's no way you of those people could just share the camera and not bring that up. That would just be too obvious. In in the early 2000s, there was a, a series uh, called Son of M where Quicksilver actually, I think, was married to um, uh, Crystal of the Inhumans uh, for a while. I don't think they have a child, but, I mean, they were married for a while. So, this, I mean, this is pretty close. This is pretty close <laughs> to all that. So, yeah. um, I, I j- I'm, again, I'm always I'm always a big Inhumans fan. They they had it on the movie slate for a while. The TV show went and done messed it up real big. But the same <laughs> guy who messed up Iron Fist. Uh, so if Feige's in charge of all of this, maybe he finally has that back under control. He's like, yeah. what we were going to do with them to kick off Miss Marvel, now we can do it again our way. So. Well, I mean, not only are you a huge Inhumans fan, but you are probably one of the biggest Black Bolt fans. So how do you feel about Vin Diesel in the role? it's fine. He's going from a role as Groot where he only speaks and we don't see him to a role where we only see him and he doesn't speak. So this is fine. This is fine so with me. Just got to work on his facial expressions, his facial acting, I guess. Yeah. Um, and definitely see, see kind of how that plays out. I, I'd love to see what they do with it. Like, you know, the costumes make everything right. Uh-huh. The TV budget costumes didn't do nothing for me. So if they can, you know, line it up to make him with the full mask and everything in this one, Hey, I'm down for it. Let's, yeah. let's see and what it looks like. Yeah, it makes you wonder how much they'll be in this uh, series. You know, if it's you know six or eight episodes, are these going to be like the Tony Stark to Peter Parker, where they're kind of like mentoring her, or is I mean, really, who she looks up to is Captain Marvel proper. So, like, maybe they'll be you know. I mean, the the Inhumans uh, in the TV show at least didn't exactly start off as like the the best nicest guys. They we're kind of these elites on the moon, so you know they might not be very nice to Miss Marvel. But, who knows? But also, it could be one of those things where we're briefly where they're ex- they have to explain how the Terrigen crystals gives her her power. Mm-hmm. Somebody has to. So they could. This could be part of that where they're like kind of, I guess, um, not missionaries, but like you know, hey, we're we're, from, we're going around telling all these people who we have now discovered they have powers, what they are, and you have a chance to join us. And she probably says no. And, and you know, stays down on Earth or something. So <laughs> we were here to talk to you about the Inhumans <laughs> Initiative. Yeah, the Inhumans Project uh, is kicking <laughs> off. Uh, so um, we we need actors. We need to fix you know everything that w- came before us. So, but there's that. So I mean, I'm excited for that. Miss Marvel. I think we're gonna see a lot more of her uh, starting in 2020 anyway with the video game and and beyond. So Mike, that's the show this week. That's that's good. Uh, I, I like it. Lots of good news here. Uh, if people want to know what you're up to, what you're doing. Where can they find you at? Well, they can find me at Mike Royer Design on Instagram and Twitter, and you can read my web comics at pickledcomics.com. Chris, if people want to catch up with you, where can they find you? Find me on Twitter, Valdan V A L D A N. 
uh, or Instagram, Ballin87. Thanks to Electric. He, yeah, we gave him a shout last week. He's shouting back at us this week. He he hunted me down somewhere. I don't remember which platform, <laughs> but he talked to me. I got a new phone this week, so I'm all confused on what accounts I've logged into and what phones I've, accounts I've not logged into yet. So mm, is that classic? You know, it's a classic who dis situation. Exactly. Uh, you can also head over to Comic UI, and I'm hoping to hit GalaxyCon up uh, later next month in November. Uh, if people want to know more about our show, maybe go listen to that review of Joker we did what last week, two weeks ago. Um, they can. Where can they find all those stuff at? Oh, it's so easy. All you got to do is visit superheroslate.com and subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, and wherever else you like to listen to podcasts. Uh, you definitely want to check out our websites for our show notes. So if you uh, didn't catch everything that we that we said in this episode, if you want to see the links that we were talking about, uh, hit up superheroslate.com. You can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and the Gram, and you can get merch at superheroslate.com slash store. We love hearing from you. We love the shout outs. We love reaching out. Uh, we love chatting with you. Uh, I'm trying to do better about logging into our social media accounts more than just when I post the episodes on Monday. But, uh, you know, we get busy during the week. So I, I can very much confirm that if, if we don't get back to you somewhere in the middle of the week, we read everything. We always read everything. So we love hearing from you. And we love our super fans. Yes. So if you want to be a super fan of this show, it's very easy. All you have to do is put candy corn on a pizza oh and then cook it in your oven because I oh, saw that on Twitter this. this week. And if you put candy corn on your pizza and you can somehow confirm that you've eaten it, uh, I don't know what I'll do. I'll do it. And anything that I can to shout you out on the show, I'll promote whatever you want to do. I think that is hilarious. I kind of want to try it. Now, <clears throat> originally I thought it was a crazy idea and it was just for just for the lulls, but we were at the grocery store just last night in the frozen pizza section and they're making a, a marmalade cheese pizza. So marmalade sounds much fancier than candy corn for sure, but it's a sweet component still with the pizza. So Chris, it's not totally out of bounds. So uh, maybe don't scoff next time I bring it up. No, I'm going to. I'm going to scoff at the candy <laughs> corn ideas. And when you get to the end of the show and you're like, you got to drink the Kool-Aid, you got to become part of you know, that kind of no, thing. No, we're not drinking the Kool-Aid, Chris. We're eating the candy corn. Oh, my gosh. Uh, well, if you want to join his candy corn brigade, you let him know. He'll be, yeah. he'll be excited about that. But uh, until then, we will see you guys next week. All right. Adios. Thanks for listening. And don't forget to subscribe. Who, who watches The Watchmen? We do.